There are those that believe that magic only assists you as a tool to utilize at your will. And then some know magic as life itself. It is one thing to choose this path of magic and traditional healing. It's another thing to be anointed with it. And if so, if you doubt every step and every candle, you would ask, why isn't my magic magical? In this video, you will learn some key points to why your magic may not be working. Bonjour, comment ça va? Vous allez bien? Je suis comme those that random do. I am Queen Cole, the Hoodoo Queen of the Imperial Court of Milner Meadows de la Pound, owner of Comedos Kanja, the creators and founders of the annual Hoodoo Queen Kanja Fet, and the proud, proud owners of Kanja South. Bienvenue to Kanja South, 2353 Airport Boulevard, Erie Mobile, Alabama. So in this video, we are gonna focus on why your magic ain't working. The consistency of your practice, the consistency of your magic, and some information to why things may not be manifesting. But before we get deep into all of that, I need for you to subscribe to this channel, like this video, giving it a thumbs up, as well as giving a beautiful and positive comment or question below. Stay tuned. Ooh, welcome back. I am so happy that you are here. This video is going to be really exciting. Again, I was blessed to be presented with the question of, you know, why isn't my magic working? Is it something to deal with the consistency of my practice, of my magic? What is going on? Well, there can be a couple of things. So I'm going to, it, it, it could be a large number of things, but I'm going to hit some very strong points. Um, and as always, I'm going to present you with the truth, right? So it may not be comfortable. It may not be favorable to your ears, but it's exactly what you need to hear in order for you to get what you want. Okay. So first and foremost, um, a really big issue. So let's say let's say problem one. A really big issue is most people discover magic later in their twenties and their thirties. Um, and when I say discover it, I mean actually has the, even mid twenties if you want to. Really, at that point, getting the chance to practice as you want, right? Well, because of that, you enter this world of magic. Even if you were a magical child and you may have saw things and you knew things, you literally didn't, you mean, more than likely you grew up in a Christian household or went to church and all of those things. Um, but it wasn't until you became an adult out of the house that you began to really discover what all of this is to you, right? Well, a large issue with that is you treat magic as a tool versus a lifestyle. You treat magic as a secondary um, tool or, or, or assistance versus your primary tool or assistance. So one of my... Um, one of my sayings, one of my mottos, if you will, I always tell people, never decide about things in your life. Always divine. Always divine. Divination should be first. You don't know what to do? Divine. You don't know if you should trust? Divine. You don't know? You don't know? Divine, divine, divine. And that is because that's the way that I was brought up. It was never, what do you want to do? If you have any questions, Shake this up real quick. Throw them out. Cast them bones or, or, or cast this or whatever the situation may be. And from there, we knew what to do. 
So a large issue is most people are using magic out of a place of a tool. Well, let's think about that, okay? Let's think about that point. If you're using magic as a tool and it's not a tool that you use all the time, you may forget some key components to using that tool. So that if magic is this really, really incredible, incredible, powerful drill that has all of these different settings, right? You then, um, but, but you don't use a drill every day. When you use that drill, you're going to have to, you know, pick it back up and let me think about this, this setting, that setting, and so forth and so on. And that's where a large space of inconsistency can come about. Now, here's another thing. There are multiple things that I will cover. There are probably more than what I'm thinking because this just came up. So here's another thing pertaining to that. Well, if you haven't used this tool or you don't use this tool on a daily basis, you may be uncomfortable using that tool, meaning you are doubtful in its abilities. You are stressed that this may not work to your liking. One of the largest issues with persistence and consistency, or excuse me, consistency with your magic, with your, with your uh, abilities, uh, with your practice, out, the worry, the fear, those things vibrate on a low vibrational frequency, therefore is going to manifest on a low vibrational frequency. It's going to manifest slow or it's not going to manifest at all or there are going to be constant delays the whole way. It's going to be a struggle. Oh, all right. So understand that if you don't use that tool all the time, that you are more than likely going to be somewhat um, uncomfortable or when you do something you're just doing it from a space and a place of I'm doing it but you don't know why you're doing it who did it first the importance of doing it and not so much doing it wrong but and, and that, that's something else too that's another thing a lot of people go oh so many people fear of doing things wrong there's no wrong way yes it is get your life messed up thinking ain't no wrong way. Completely have your wig snatched, thinking there's not a wrong way. It's trial and error. No, it can be trial and death. Play with it if you want to. Here's another thing, and this is really important pertaining to, really important pertaining to um, the old ways and traditional ways in hoodoo which is the old people tell you regarding magic. If you don't know that stuff, don't worry about it. If you ain't born with it, don't try to go get it. And that's when you talk to an elder ages 70 and up, they gonna tell you, mm -mm, don't mess with that. That ain't what you want, don't mess with that. So that is just a really, really true important thing. Here's another thing too. Not only just magic, but people are also really big nowadays in pulling religious idols, deities, gods, customs, traditions, and throwing it into your magic. Religion and magic are two totally different things. But again, people will use Ozuli Freda, Ezele Danto, Papa Legba, which is not Ilegwa, which is not Eshu. Because um, people really like to make them into one thing. I saw this video about discovering voodoo, and they went to New Orleans, and people's like, "Oh, Papa Leg was he like what?" No, 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 no. Anyways, but people use these deities, gods, and energies, and these divine powers as tools as well. I'm gonna use this as this, and use this as that, etc. So that's a really, really big part. Okay, so now let's talk about another part that can confuse people. Because if you don't know what you're really doing and you don't really know the definitions of things, and I will explain that here in a second, you may be 
be operating in a space expecting a result back from something that you can't get a result from. So this particular part is really trying to be clear on what is magic versus customs and traditions. Okay, so for example, in the black community, there are a lot of customs and traditions that we have that we do just as, again, a lifestyle. You don't sweep over feet. You can call it superstition, but you don't sweep over feet. You don't split poles. You don't step on cracks. You don't let two people play in your head and like all kinds of different situations. There's many things, many customs. Those customs aren't necessarily magic. They're just customs to that culture and that and those traditions. And you will find that across the board in many different cultures. So speaking of cultures and communities, of course, I'm going to just go ahead and throw this in here now and keep it moving forward. Yes, the reason a part of why your magic isn't manifesting may be because you're working in a system that doesn't resonate with your ancestors or your particular lineage. That's a possibility. It's a strong possibility if you're practicing an ancestral system, but you're not using or you're not connecting to your ancestors. That doesn't make sense, right? So you're claiming this ancestral based system or magic, but then you turn around and you are ignoring your ancestry. That doesn't add up, you know? It doesn't really add up. No, it doesn't add up at all, actually. So um, that's another thing. Just that could be a really big issue that you should possibly, possibly think about and question. Um, another thing is... Hmm. Oh, yes. I do apologize. I couldn't read my own handwriting. So anyways, um, another big thing is magic. Um, and this is something that, again, people probably may not like and may not get it. But let me just say this. Everybody is born with gifts. But not everybody's gifts are magical. Some people gifts are mundane. Some people gifts are magical. Some people may have a little bit of both, okay? So you may not be born with the gift of magic, which means you will not have the gift to manifest. Also too, the power of now is not hoodoo, is not obion, is not magic. It's a, it's a system of spiritual enlightenment and methods and all those great wonderful things but it's not voodoo. And a lot of people really try the whole, the, the power of now and the intentions. And that's different, you know, but there, there's that thing. So anyways, um, you may not be born with the gift of magic. You may, and if you are, let me say this. Say that you are born with the gift of magic, meaning that now you are maybe a witch, um, a... Um, priestess of some sort, a medicine man, a woman, a conjure doctor, or a granny man to this, or a strategy worker, whatever the situation may be, um, what you call it in different cultures, these are the people that are gifted with magic, gifted with magic. Now, this is the thing about being gifted with magic, is it comes in levels. Just because you may be born with some magic doesn't make it, doesn't mean that you're gifted with all magic. This means that you make and do money work. You make and not do love work. You make and do really good love work, but you can't do cleansings. You may do really great cleansings, but you can't do um, banishing or cursing. And just for example, you may be able to do four or five of those things, but your ashe level may not be heavy. So you may get, a, you know, your things may work for a day or so. Your things may work for a month maybe, and that's it. But that's another thing. And that's something you have to be honest with yourself about. Well, Queen, how do I know and how can I confirm? This is where I would definitely, definitely ask you 
to go to someone, not someone who's knowledgeable about different gifts. You can Google different magical gifts and abilities. You can Google different magical systems, but you need to speak with someone who is gifted with these gifts heavily and they have been doing it for a very long time. Um, and, and, and this is the next thing. Why your magic may not be working. Who's the source of your information? Who is the source of your information? If you are getting your sources from these Instagram, YouTube influencers, or influencers, whatever they're called, right? Say that you're getting information from them and they have 200,000 followers. And they have 200,000 followers because of the way they look. They have 200,000 followers because um, they say a whole lot of things that make everybody feel good. Popularity does not equal ashe. Popularity does not equal um, power. Popularity does not equal um, gifted. Popularity does not equal anointed or being anointed. Popularity means you're popular. People like what you got to say. Um, not that you got results. You know, and that's the truth of the matter. So this is the thing about it. If you are following, whether it is an influencer, whether it's a priest, a priestess, Mambo, Ogon, don't let these titles mess you up. Because people pay for those nowadays. Okay? People pay for those nowadays. Now, some people are anointed and supposed to be priests and Ea this and Baba that and um, um, Ogon this and Mambo this and that and the third. Yes, we do still exist, but there are also some elders of these communities just like, look, you give me $15,000, I'm going to give you your ass song. You know, you give me X amount of thousand dollars, I'm going to give you this title. And paying for it don't make you anointed. It doesn't. You're born, you're born with the gifts that you have. And, and you are born without gifts that you don't have. So you have to really question the source of your knowledge. So if the source of your knowledge is by a pretty face and no substance, your magical foundation doesn't exist. So you're not going to really have the knowledge and the wisdom to know how to manifest correctly and appropriately. And what it's going to look like. You do a money working and you expecting this large lump sum because they're telling you you're going to be a millionaire in the next two months. That ain't going to happen. But you may become a millionaire um, within a year's time or maybe you're going to win the lottery, but maybe it's going to be this jackpot, that jackpot, that jackpot. Then you become that. Um, your money, you're going to have a larger flow of uh, money come into you. A flow of money is, is, is a flow. It's not just a big gush of, it's not a typhoon or a tsunami of money. Sometimes it's just, it trickles in, but you're constantly getting it and you're not wanting for nothing. So that's good. And so it's important to have, know, have again, somebody, a mentor, an elder, even if it's an influencer, if it's a priest or priestess, mambo, ogan, whatever, but somebody that can really give you the truth of what manifestation looks like in love, in money, in health, in whatever the situation may be. If you're doing your working yourself. So those are some really, really important things that I think you should really think about um, regarding the consistency of your magic, the consistency of your practice, and, and, and all of that. So keep those things in mind. So I would like to say this. Um, I've had the question of people saying, you know, Queen, we really love your videos, um, but will you give me more spell work? Well, look. I teach classes, online classes, and in-person classes where we discuss traditions, customs, and spell work. There's the Hoodoo Queen Conjure Fit where I give you very strong spell work. So there's many places in which I do this, but there's a lot, and this is something, again, people don't like, but this is the truth. Hoodoo has been exploited. Oh, we are exploited. A lot of African magical systems are exploited and religions are exploited and they're capitalized on and they're and people just make money off of them. And so they're going to sell this spell kit, sell this, sell this, sell this. I will sell you tools 
but I'm not going to sell you necessarily spells. First and foremost, some things I can give you because they're customs of the African diaspora or something that I know that my lineage has done that's just customs and traditions does not necessarily magical spells, but they are magical to people who aren't of the community, right? But then um, it's important to know that these, the spell workings, the rituals, these things are esoteric. They're secretive to some families. You will never have my family secrets. That's just that. I mean, that's just as simple. In, in religions, and some religions, I can tell you, Azuli Frey, the colors are this, Azuli Danto's colors are that. Um, you venerate them and honor them and give reverence to them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's simple stuff. But then there are secrets in Vodou that you cannot know until you are initiated and at whatever particular level, right? So it's important to understand that a lot of the spell work that people want to get I'm going to give you customs. I'm going to give you traditions. I may give you some little easy spell to do's here and there, but don't expect for me to be giving you these deep secrets, how to summon demons and how to... No, 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 no. That's giving somebody a loaded gun. Somebody that's hungry, somebody who's thirsty, somebody who just wants to have power, a loaded gun, give it to you and have you run out in these streets summoning things and messing up your life. No, I'm not going to do that. One is disrespectful to my ancestry and my ancestors. It's disrespectful to myself and it's very hurtful to the community and as well as to you. So there's that. So I will be doing more videos on more information. Um, again, some customs and things that you should know about. Um, and so just for example, with this idea again of what is the solution then? to my practice not working in the inconsistency of practice. When you are living your daily life, respond to your mundane world in a magical way. Divine on things first. Respond and react in that space, number one. That's a really, 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 really big thing that you have to learn to do. The other thing is to be honest with yourself, with your abilities, or things that you don't have. All right. Um, the next thing is again, make sure that if you're buying, for example, books, question the author. If you buy something on Native American, you know, shamanism, and it's and you're buying Cherokee um, shamanism books from Queen Co. I'm not Cherokee. Question that shit. Question it, okay? Don't don't just go with it because I'm the hoodoo queen, all right? So be be question those things, um, question those authors. Think about the system. Um, these systems aren't dead. So go to people in those communities, not the people who learned it from the community, but people who are actually in in that space, okay? So, anyways, um, yeah. I hope that this helps. I do look forward to hearing um, that your practice changes and that it grows. I look forward to um, seeing you guys again very soon. And again, just we come with those in the random do. I am Queen Cole, the Huda Queen. Until next time, I'll be on too. Just one second before you go. I don't know how I forgot to tell you, but make sure that you go and visit ConjureSouth.com. So you can see all the incredible events that we have and ceremonies that we have here. People are getting blessed in very huge ways coming to these ceremonies. At the end of this month on Halloween, we will be having the Fete de Lumière Ancestrale, which is the celebration of party of ancestral lights, where we will honor, feed, venerate, and give reverence to our ancestors for their guidance and protection moving into 2020. Also, if you're interested in participating in this weekend's October 26th Hudu Queen Seance series, you can find all the information there. You must reserve your seats and spaces for both of those events. Last but not least, at ConjureSouth.com, you can actually um, purchase your in-person reading, root work consultation versus cards or bones or 
mediumship readings, whatever it is. So go there. If you're looking for product or over the phone readings, then you want to go to the hoodoqueen.com, T H E hoodooqueen.com. Thank you so, so very much. Just we come and those around you do. Now, I will see you later. Aviantu.